Callie Kim, camera guy, you're on in five, four, three, two. Hi, everyone. Hey, Oops, everyone. I'm sitting on my plants. Hang on. <laughs> that didn't what work plants? So, that didn't work so good. <laughs> I don't see any plants here. <sighs> okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Monday. <laughs> it is incredibly green out here today. We have had several days of rain and the garden is just bursting to life. I made an Instagram post a little while ago just saying how I can get lost out here in the green. Right, Jerry? <laughs> oh, yeah. We had a beautiful day yesterday, uh, Sunday afternoon, and we just tinkered around out here. Uh, it was really fun, you know, no agenda, but Kim was off doing her own thing, and I was kind of like fixing planters and you know, just finding a reason to get my tools out and stuff. So it was a really, really nice day. Gorgeous day again today. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. So welcome, you guys. Hope yep. everyone had a wonderful Easter weekend. <laughs> and today we are, we are <laughs> today I'm answering uh, some FAQs, FAQ gardening questions of the week. I've had so many um, questions lately, so many emails. So I thought I would take this oh. time and answer some of the questions I got during the week. And Brandon, it's great to see you here. Brandon Rowley. Brandon Hi. Rowley's back. We've missed you. And thank you so much for the $4.99 Super Chat. We really yes. appreciate it. Oh, yeah, good to see you again, Brandon. Sorry, we're scooching and getting positioned here. <laughs> we have an umbrella behind us that might blow over at any minute. So sorry if we're a little bit all over the place. But you want to make sure you stick around today because um, we have two big things we're going to do different towards the very end of the video. So make sure you don't leave for that and uh, so you don't miss that. And the other thing is, is I want to tell you that I think any minute now we are going to hit 300,000 YouTube subscribers. That's really, really exciting for us. And I just want to share with you just briefly what that means to us and to me. Um, it's really not the person with the biggest YouTube channel wins. It's not about that at all. But for us, we really wanted to have a quality channel with good content and good uh, educational you know, uh, content as well and something that changes people's lives. And also we just always wanted to be very <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we just wanted to be uh, very uh, relatable and be ourselves. And so to me, you know, hitting a 300,000 uh, subscriber thing, that just, that affirms that, you know, we're headed in that direction thing. So that's what it means to us. Sorry, I'm rambling now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Megan, for the $1.99 hey, super Megan. chat. Much love from Ohio. Thank you for everything. Megan, Ohio. we really appreciate your support. Thanks for being here today. Hopefully it's warming up in Ohio and you can get some garden uh, things planted in your garden. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to echo what, um, what Jerry said and we are very thankful to have reached this milestone. Really grateful to you guys for all of your support. And also um, we want to thank those of you who are new, joining us for the first time, jumping into gardening. It's a great Great time to grow veggies and we really appreciate you jumping in with us and just growing along with us it's so much fun we love the community here and we have a great time on the Monday live streams and on the Friday fireside chats a lot of you have been joining us for those too so oh, it's really yeah. exciting oh yeah so speaking of that this Friday night we are going to do another fireside chat it is going to be a party celebrating the you know the 300k thing because that's all of us Right? That's right. It's not just us, it's all of us. So I'm gonna dress up like it's a Friday evening out, going to a Hollywood party, you know, that kind of thing. And I guess I will too. So <laughs> you guys need to, you know, put on your, what's that called, your best? Formal Friday? I don't know. No, it's not formal. It's, <laughs> no, not it's formal. Not just, quite. But anyway, just so dress up. this Friday, no. 5.30 p.m., right? Yes, 5.30. 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It and might be fun to dress up because a lot of people are lounging around in their PJs lately. So yeah. it might feel good to mm -hmm. get your hair done, put your makeup on, put your yes. nice clothes on, uh -huh. and join us by the fire. And speaking of hair done, you may or may not notice my hair. <laughs> I actually thinned it myself. You did? I did. Oh, wow. Right before this went live, <laughs> I watched a couple of YouTube videos and I th I said, I think I got this, but I feel like better again because I was getting like, oh, you know, that goodness. kind of thing. Wow, so, looks good. Good yeah, job, hon. Mm -hmm. Nice. So for this Friday night, it's going to be fun. Friday night. So let's say hello. A lot of you yeah. are, we're in the chat early. We had a great time chatting away. So let's say hello, see who's here today. And I know we have a lot of people who are joining us. Um, week after week, so thank you so much. Game Nerd Mom, hi, thank you so much for your kind words there, I appreciate that. 
Rosa Leon, hoping today would be nice, but still dealing with the rain. Back home for a week and had a lot of weeding to do. Yes, absolutely. Up in Yucaipa, California. Is that up? That's north, right? That's north, Okay. Yeah. Blake Story. Hi, how are you, Blake? Irene, good to see you again. Luz, good to see you. Mickey, thank you so much. Nisha, good to see you Nisha, here again. Aloha, Anne. Thanks for doing this. Always a fun way to learn. Thank you, Anne. Welcome. And especially if you're um, new to gardening or new to the live streams. Can you scoot over just a tad? There we go. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of the sun there. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Um, if you're new to gardening or new to live streams um, here on Mondays, um, let us know. We want to give a special welcome to you guys. And it's all about just hanging out and um, providing some tips, tricks, and resources and learning together. So let us know. Carol Stanford, cucumbers are growing like crazy. <laughs> Any ideas for a vertical trellis that will support the weight of the cucumbers? We have all kinds of videos on trellising. Yes. So go back, search our YouTube channel, and you are going to find a ton of easy trellis information. <laughs> California Gardening TV. Hi, how are you? Nice to have you on here today. Cypress, thank you very much. And let's James, see. James, Sharon, thank you all. <laughs> Nellykins growing her loofah. And yes, Nellykins, I am going to get mine planted this week. I promise you on next week's live stream, I'll be able to tell you that I got mine planted. Right on. Stephanie, hi from Colorado. Okay, just scrolling through here. All right, so um, I want to just throw out there uh, the first frequently asked question. We're going to um, kind of divide things up into a couple different categories. Um, I pulled out five different categories, so we'll get through as many questions as we can today and then hopefully be able to answer a lot of your questions live as well. And I wanted to let you guys know right up front, if you've emailed me lately, I promise you I'm not ignoring you. I have just had such a high volume of emails, I cannot get to the emails. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, so just be patient. The best way to get your question answered is either to ser search my channel for the information um, on the vegetable that you're looking for or the topic you're looking for. Find a video on it. Most likely there is a video on it. Um, if you can't find that, then just go to Google. I want to encourage you to do your own research um, and then uh, tune into the live streams because we do a lot of Q&A here on the live streams. But I apologize for not getting to your email. And also, before we jump into the questions, another Another um, uh, thing I'm not able to respond to right now is when a particular item will be back in stock on our website. So I'm really sorry about that, guys. Um, just check back. The best thing I can say is check back within a day or so. The Smart Pots will be back in stock at some point tomorrow or Wednesday. And if a seed collection is out of stock, just be patient. Hang in there for a few days or even you know later in that day, and we may have been able to put it back in stock. So with that being said, we're going to jump into some of our questions. Okay. First area we're going to talk about is composting. Lots of people want to get to composting. It's a great way to get free fertilizer for your garden. And a question I had this week on um, composting is from Vanessa Martini. So hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much for asking this question. I'm trying to compost in containers the way that you said. You can compost in containers. I have tiny little gnats or flies that hover around the surface of my container. Um, I searched the web, good job there Vanessa, and found an item that said these are fungus gnats that will eat the roots of seedlings. Do you know how to get rid of these and do you have to worry about them in compost? Okay, you can, you don't really have to worry about them in compost because they're not doing any harm to your compost pile, but they can be kind of annoying, especially if your compost pile is near your house. So my best suggestion is when you throw in new items to your compost pile, like those those vegetable scraps or fruit scraps, um, cover them up with something like shredded leaves or dig them down into the compost pile. And that way it just gives a covering and the gnats will be much less likely to come around. But honestly, I wouldn't worry about it too much, um, you know, unless it's just a pain to you and a bother to you, but that's my best advice for that. So let me know, Vanessa, give it a try and let me know um, how it does there. Now, let me answer another question about composting. Um, there we have so many videos on composting you guys it is an easy process to do it does take a little bit of time but it's a lot of fun and we have videos on composting in large containers and small containers like this five gallon one. So if you're growing on a patio this is full of compost that I made here in my garden and go and watch that video but the question here is on um, uh, let's see, speeding up the process. We did a, a video on hot composting. So how do you speed up the process? How long does it typically take? 
Well, if you follow the steps in that hot composting video, you will have compost in probably four to six weeks, maybe even faster. So you get the right mixture of greens and browns, and that'll really help speed that process up so you can get free compost for your garden. So just a couple little composting questions answered there, and I wanna hear your questions about composting or about anything else here in the chat. And while the questions start to come in, I wanna say if you're new to this channel, I really suggest that you start really with the playlist. Once you watch the video that it is that you, you found us on or whatnot, go to the playlist because everything, Kim organizes every playlist by topic and you'll find all of our series is there. So it's definitely start there. You'll probably get yes. your questions answered. Then you can, you know, email here or, or chat here. Absolutely. I think Cliff might've posted a link, our moderator Cliff. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cliff, um, for the composting series playlist. It's also on the very first page of our channel when you look at our channel page. Good. And Pat Sella, we do see you. So yes, you are back, just in case you didn't know it. You're back. Oh, <laughs> hi, Pat Sella. Okay, let's see any, if there's any composting questions. I'm gonna grab, grab those first. Um, Blake's story, what should I use for my compost? Blake, there's all kinds of things you can use, use for compost. We go into that in detail in our videos, kitchen scraps. You can use things that you pull out of the garden. Um, don't use dairy products. Um, you can use eggshells though, coffee grounds. Don't use meat. Um, lots of different things you can use for compost and make good use out of something that you would normally be throwing away. I personally don't use grass clippings that have been treated with um, fertilizers, uh, fertilizers kind of, things like yeah. that, like weed and feed. I don't like to use weeds because I don't like to chance spreading weeds around in my garden. So, but you get lots of ideas from our compost videos. Yeah. Hey, James Bustard shares that he's watched Kim's tomato guide uh, videos numerous times. So that's perfect. Thank, great oh, example. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And we have here a super chat from Tanya. Thank you so much, Tanya. Appreciate the $1.99 super chat and appreciate you being here today. Um, and just to let you guys know too, there are a couple of longer type videos where I compiled all of my tomato videos, all of my pepper videos, all of my compost videos into one movie, <laughs> so to say, about tomatoes. I think that's the one he's talking about there. So that way you don't have to jump around all over my channel to find um, the different videos on those topics. So there's a few of those as well. You can look for those in the playlist. Okay, Luke, hi Luke, welcome back here. I know you're a, a pretty new viewer, so appreciate you joining us this morning. I've been trying to do hot compost, it won't get hot. But I follow your videos, uh, there are tons of coffee grounds, any tips? Okay, Luke, I would suggest, number one, making sure that your pile is large enough. That's really um, one of the things that will help your pile get hot. A small pile just doesn't have the volume um, to generate the heat, to get the microbes, you know, really moving and shaking and um, to generate that heat to get it to break it down faster. So you do need to have quite a large amount of materials. Um, and yes, coffee grounds definitely um, do help. You might wanna make sure that you keep it covered. Um, so that the heat isn't escaping. So try those and then come back and let us know if, um, if that helps. Okay, Lou Luke? states that uh, newspaper, egg cartons, boxes, coffee grounds are, are items that she all used, that she used. And I remember when Kim just started doing this, I'd started finding these weird things around the house. Like, why, is this, <laughs> why are these eggshells over here in this big pile? And Remember some other yes, funny, funny stuff. stuff? I was like, what are you doing? And she goes, oh, I'm composting. You know? And it's a great way. You don't have to throw away a lot of trash that way. Yeah, you sure. can, you know, make your compost. So I'm sure someone great. can relate to this. Okay, Tanya. Tanya oh, wow. wow. $4.99 Super Chat. Thank, Thank you. you, Tanya. And she has a question. Is it okay to plant tomatoes in containers, although temps are 46 at night? Mm. And Tanya, yes, actually, I just planted out some tomatoes yesterday and it got down in the 40s last night. Um, you do wanna make sure that you acclimate your seedlings to the outdoors before you bring them outside, if you're growing them inside to start with. And I wouldn't um, put them outside if it's gonna be in the low 40s, but our temperatures are in the high 40s to the 50s lately. But you can always plant them out and then cover them with like a storage bin or a plastic cloth or an old um, quilt or something like that if the temperatures are gonna dip. So keep an eye on the weather and then cover them, up, cover them up to give them that little bit of protection from the cold. So yeah, go for it, Tanya. Just keep an eye on the weather. Uh, JS emailed Good Dirt and having heard back from them, the question is, is Good Dirt plant food organic? 
Yes, it is. Everything Good Dirt, Good Dirt has on their website is organic. All the Good Dirt soils, the plant foods, everything is organic and, and uh, produced in a very highly sustainable process. I thought Mac is right behind us. Yes, um, and amazing. they are slammed right now. Yes. So that's why you haven't heard. But yeah, great question. You can pretty very much good. count anyone in the garden industry is going to be slammed right now. So just hang in there, be patient, mm -hmm. and then research it to find your, your answer there. Okay, um, Irene. Hi, Irene. How's it going? Can I plant squashes and melons side by side? You absolutely can. Yeah, there's no problems with that. Um, I'm going to be growing some melons up a trellis behind me and probably plant squashes right behind us here um, once we pull out the nasturtiums and um, get the summer garden planted. Rita Gibson down in San Diego talks about her trash uh, actually going out. Uh, has reduced tremendously because she's composting so much of it. That's so true. Very good. Yeah. And we're reducing that footprint. Right on. Absolutely. Very important. Oh, that's funny, Rita. Okay, let's see if there's anything else on compost. Um, we'll Mike move on P. to the next topic. Yeah, <laughs> while you get the next top topic ready, Mike P., this is hilarious. Anyone want to swap weather? My plants really need to move out. It's <laughs> hilarious, man. That's funny. Great. <laughs> Okay, we're actually going to move on to the next topic. Lots of questions on compost um, and do go back and watch that compost playlist to get more of your questions answered that we can't do here on the live stream. But the next frequently asked questions are all about grow lights. And let me just read a question here from Humble Alley. Um, first question is, when do you begin to use the grow light? before or after germination? So great question. A lot of people are confused about this. And what I like to do as soon as I plant my little um, seeds in my peat pellets or my little containers is just pop them under those grow lights. Because what you want is as soon as that little seedling emerges from the soil or germinates, you want it to be hit with a bright, intense light. And the reason for that is you don't want your little baby seedling getting leggy. So if, if you don't know what legginess is, it means that stalk reaches up for the light. <laughs> reaches up for the light. It's thin and spindly. It's not going to be nice and strong. And the light is what is going to help it grow beautifully and be healthy and strong to put out in your garden. So definitely pop those little seedlings before they're even seedlings under the light as soon as you plant it. Brandon, Brandon. Riley, thank you again for the super chat. Thank and we so enjoyed meeting you in December too. That's quite a drive for you guys, I remember. And it was really good to meet you. So, and it's good to see you back here too. Very, very good to Thank see you. Thank you again. Um, so another question I get all the time <laughs> about grow lights is, what do I do about legginess? So I just mentioned that. So one thing that can really, really help with legginess is to make sure that your seedlings are no more than two to three inches away from the light. So say you have this little tray of seedlings right here. Jerry, your hand is gonna be the light. Oh. <laughs> Okay, put your hand like this, like your grow lights would be. You want your seedlings to be just like that. You don't want it to be down like this. There's Jerry's hand, here's my <laughs> seedlings. Because then they're gonna stretch. They want to, to get uh, close to that light. And if they if they're stretch, see how nice and strong and stocky these stems are? They're gonna be kind of spindly. So you want them to be nice and strong and stocky so they're ready to go out in the garden. You don't want them to be spindly. Um, if you have a problem with leggy seedlings, like sometimes lettuce will get leggy just because it's planted close together and uh, maybe it's been in your peat pellets or your little trays too long, then just plant it a little bit deeper once you get it planted outside in your garden and hopefully that will help. Uh, Rebecca says she has over 75 tomato plants. She'll wow. be sharing all the, ex the extras with her neighbors and her friends. That is oh, wow. so cool. Very cool. That's a great way to pass on the garden to your friends. So, okay, let me um, pop in the chat here and see if there's any more questions about grow lights. One thing I did want to mention before I do that, a lot of people are kind of intimidated or scared to get grow lights set up. And I want to encourage you guys, don't let it stop you. It's not a big mystery. It's not even hard or expensive to get them set up. Um, I've got, of course, a, a video on that, several videos on that, on how to get those set up. Um, you can do it inexpensively. <laughs> Most of the things are available on Amazon, but I know they are running short supply these days. And of course I have a whole um, section on it in my book. So grab this. Thank you, Cliff. <laughs> Good chapter in Kim's book on using grow lights with pictures and everything, step-by-step -step instructions. And you can grab this over on my website, calliekimgardenhome.com. So what are your questions about grow lights? 
Someone just had a question about the blue and red lights. Which blue is better. and red lights. I have never used blue or red lights. Mm -hmm. I just keep it simple and stick to the regular um, LED type of lights. Um, I know Cliff, you may have used red or blue lights. So if you could comment on that, that would be great. Um, but there's lots of very specific information in the videos as far as what kind of lights to use. Um, what are your lumens and kelvins and all kinds of little information about that. You can't just take a light bulb out of your living room lamp and use that. It does have to be a special light bulb specific for growing plants. So make sure you check out that video. Thank you, Cliff. You just put the link there in the live stream. And Appreciate that. Let me uh, jump in here. Sherry Silva from North San Diego. Is it too late to plant following the following seeds? Brussels sprouts, rainbow carrots, asparagus. Um, she also gave us a super chat for five dollars. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Um, scallop squash, broccoli. Okay, it, it really depends on where you live. Um, let me see what vegetable she said. Um, Brussels sprouts, rain. Oh, North San Diego. Okay. Um, you know what? It, they are all the things you mentioned. Aside from the squash, are cool weather vegetables. So just kind of gauge your your temperature there in San Diego. Cool weather vegetables like temperatures up to about 75 degrees, and you guys are pretty mild in San Diego, so you might be able to get away with planting those right now, especially like carrots will do really well. The squash is a warm weather vegetable, so you're gonna wanna get those seeds started probably inside and then move them outside in a couple of weeks, but just go for it. There's lots of information on that um, in my book as far as cool weather versus warm weather vegetables. You can get all kinds of information in there. And then do your own research and talk to gardeners in your area and see what works um, well. Well, and also experiment. My right favorite thing to say. Right on, Sherry. Thank you again very much. Appreciate that. Rita, thank you for encouraging me. My seedlings are great. So much of my success that I've doubled my quantity of seedlings. Wow, that's great, Rita. And you're excited to watch them grow. Yeah, we all feel that same way to watch things grow into something that we can harvest and eat, which is always super, super exciting. Now, Patsella has a great comment here I, I want to call attention to. She says, I stopped using LED lights on my seedlings. They kept getting burned, went back to fluorescent. What I admire about that comment is that she tried something different. She went yes. back a step and it seems to be working for her. And that's fantastic. Whatever works for you, you know, go with it, experiment and try it. Good job, Pat yeah, Proud absolutely. of you. Absolutely. There's so many different ways that thing, you can do things in gardening. So really good oh, job. Yeah. Always trying to experiment. Do you have my water over there? I oh, do. Okay. <laughs> I need to go on. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions here about grow lights, and then we'll move on to our next topic. I forgot, we have five topics to get through, so we better start moving here, huh? <laughs> Susan uh, calls out the, the background of our nasturtiums back there, so thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed them. Thank you. Okay, um, let me see, any quick grow light questions. <laughs> <laughs> Jim the guitar man, here's a good comment. Uh, what plants attract hummingbirds? Kim is awesome, by the way. Oh, thank you, Jim. That's so sweet of you. Yes, she um, is, Jim. <laughs> remember where we've seen the hummingbirds up on our deck? Yes. We have a, I planted a jasmine uh, tree, or not a tree, a bush last year, and it smells amazing. And we've it seen did. the hummingbirds mm -hmm. all over that. Really, uh, a lot of things that you plant for bees also attract hummingbirds. They like the nasturtiums, they like the borage. Um, they like, I've got, all kinds of wildflowers planted up here against the fence. Once those bloom, they love those. So uh, pretty much on my wildflower seed collection over on my website, or the bring on the pollinators, the, the hummingbirds like a lot of the flowers in those collections as well. Okay, we actually are gonna move on to our third topic, our third questions that we've been getting are is on seed starting. So a lot of people getting your seeds started, getting them ready to move out to the garden soon. And a question I got on seed starting, I've actually had this question quite a bit lately, is from JM. And I think maybe JM is on here today. I know JM is frequently on the live streams. And the question is, I planted two to three seeds per peat pot, peat or peat pellet, thinking hopefully one will live. Well, my tomatoes and basil all came up and most of my peppers. Do I separate them and risk damaging them or transplant as one unit or plant? Okay, you can easily separate most plants, um, aside from a few that I don't like to separate because they're a little bit more temperamental as far as disturb disturbing the roots. And one of those would be watermelon. Can you guys see these here? These are um, some watermelon I planted about a month ago. And see how there's two little uh, seedlings growing there? 
So with watermelon, what I would probably do is just plant the, the, the pellet itself. And then once it starts to grow and I find out which one is the strongest, I'll clip off the weakest link here. So that's a great way to do it with watermelon and cucumbers actually can be grown a little bit closer together. Um, however, tomatoes, you can easily separate. And I showed how to do this in my transplanting video a couple of weeks ago. So go back and watch that video. But these I actually just separated last night. These were growing in one peat pellet. And I just very gently separated them, pulled them apart, transplanted them. And once they get larger, I'll be putting them out in the garden in a couple of weeks. So yeah, it really just kind of depends on the vegetable. But give it a try. Again, do your research on um, the internet and figure out which vegetables don't like to have the roots disturbed and then go from there. All right, Papa, Jan, and... Papa and Giannis from Germany say hello. Right on. Good to have you guys. Have I don't know that I've said hi to you guys before. Good to have you here in the chat and on the live stream. Great. Great to have you here. And a lot. I'm also getting a lot of questions about um, why isn't my pepper germinating, um, things like that. So it's really important that you pay attention to what type of vegetable you're planting. Cool weather vegetables versus warm weather vegetables, and then grow them in appropriate locations in the house. And you can go back and watch our starting seeds indoors video for more information on that. But of course, peppers, if you've grown peppers before from seed, you know they like a little bit of bottom heat. So grow peppers on a heat mat to get them to germinate. But they do take a little bit longer, sometimes a week or two, especially the hot ones. Greetings to London as well. Is that Elon? Am I Hello. saying that right? Elon, good to have you. Okay, question here from Maddie Howard. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Kim. Thanks for all your help this spring season so far. When do you remove grow lights from seedlings and where do you put them in the house until they're ready to transplant outside? Okay, Maddie. Um, the answer to that question is I don't remove mine from my grow lights until they're ready to go outside because they need that light to be able to grow. And if you take, take them away from the light, they're not going to grow well and be strong and healthy. So once you're ready to acclimate your seedlings to the outdoors, and again, go back and watch our video on that to figure out when is the right time for you, then you can slowly make that transition to the outside and then they'll be in the sunshine. So they obviously won't need the grow lights of your house anymore. All right, Pam from Pennsylvania has joined us now again, and good to have her here. Debbie, you're here. I was wondering where you Hi. were, so good to see you here. Wonderful. Okay, next topic we're gonna go through is yellowing leaves. I've had this question probably three or four times this week, and this question is from Joseph Campbell. Thank you very much, Joseph, for asking the question. Hello, I am new to this. I started some cucumbers and zucchini. The weather was a little cold, but over 50 in the day. That, I'm sure that's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. They started out nice, but began to turn yellow palish and they grow really slowly. Do you have any idea what I'm doing? Okay, so let me show you again these little seedlings here. I actually sat on these at the beginning of the live stream, so they're looking a little bit smashed. But um, the bottom, a couple different things about yellowing. The bottom of my little seedlings here, you see those little yellow leaves? Those are actually called the, um, these are the little baby leaves. There's a technical term for them, which I won't even try and pronounce. But these typically do turn yellow and then drop off. That's nothing to be alarmed about. But if you have plants outside that are yellowing, a couple different things could be going on. It could be just too cold for them. And in, in the case of your question, you're growing, um, was it peppers? Cucumbers and zucchini. They are warm weather vegetables. So they, 50 is a little bit chilly for them. They're not gonna really take off and thrive until the temps get in the 70s and even into the 80s in the 60s at night. So hang in there, just be patient. And once it gets warm, you're gonna see your plants really start to take off. Other things that can cause yellowing are too much water, a lack of nitrogen, as someone just mentioned. So you just kind of have to play around with it and again, experiment and then see um, which one of them works to help your plant um, improve um, how it looks a little bit. Okay, yes, it, it, very good. Too cold for those, probably why they're yellowing, absolutely. Okay, from Rain Bee Plant and Germinating, should I trim the leaves under growing cherry tomatoes? Okay, it really depends on what type of tomato you're growing. So two different types of tomatoes, really quickly, determinate and indeterminate. Indeterminate grow over the growing season. You get lots of tomatoes throughout the growing season. They're killed off by frost. Deter and those, those you definitely do want to trim the lower leaves to give more airflow. A determinate tomato will produce its whole crop at once and then the plant will die. 
determinate tomatoes do not need trimming. So that's the difference with those. So just find out what variety yours is and then go from there. Okay, let's see. Catherine, can you use a heating pad for a heat mat? I, I did that actually when I very first started out and I was just careful though to um, keep an eye on it and I did turn it off at night. I didn't want to leave it unattended. So just, you know, be wise about it and um, be careful. You can also put it, some people have put it like on top of the refrigerator, which is a warmer spot. Oh, I remember that. I think I did on top of the yeah. oven every now and then No, too. you did the refrigerator. Yeah. I remember that. All the bees like buzzing by. So um, yeah, so just figure out a warm spot in your house if you don't have a heat mat and go from there. All right, Angela Walker, first time live chat. That's great, good to have you. Yay, you made it. Wonderful. Okay, let's see here. Um, worm tea is a great nitrogen fertilizer, water soluble for seedlings from Ryan. Um, I use the Vermistera worm tea and it is a really great organic fertilizer. It's not super high in nitrogen though, but it's great for the health and the well-being of your plants. Um, the fertilizer I use that has a higher nitrogen is the Good Dirt Plant Food, which is a great organic fertilizer. You can get that over on their website. I have a link in the, in the description on that, but that's pretty much what I use for fertilizer all over the garden is the Vermistera worm tea and then the Good Dirt Plant Food. I'm glad that you said that because someone asked uh, in the chat, they were asking, oh, so how do you add nitrogen then? So it's in the fertilizer, the liquid fertilizer, whatnot. Yes, good, yes, good. you, you wanna add some through the fertilizer. Okay, so the last topic we're going to cover today, Ooh. questions I, I get all the time on this one as well, is about mold on the soil and fungus gnats, mm. which sometimes they go hand in hand. So the question here is from Maddie M. Thank you so much, Maddie, for asking this question. Um, uh, let's see, I have tried growing microgreens indoors a few times, but a problem I repeatedly get after pr a promising start is mold on the surface of the soil and tiny white flies eating the greens. Do you have any tips for avoiding this? Okay, so yes, I do have a few tips on that. We have a video on that about fungus gnats. Um, I don't think I have one specifically on mold, um, but what you wanna do when you first plant your, your seeds to help avoid this is you can sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top of the surface of the soil. That will help. Um, cinnamon is an antibacterial, antiviral, I always get those mixed up, but anyway, it does help. And you can also set little bottle caps of apple cider vinegar with a little drop or two of dish soap to help attract the fungus gnats or the fruit flies to that instead of to your plants. As a last resort, I will also do um, neem oil um, if, the, if the problem is getting out of hand and um, that really does help as well but a lot of times you can take care of it with the first two things I mentioned. But of course, you guys, if you've ever had this problem in the house, you know that prevention is the best cure. So try to prevent the problem before it gets out of hand. Don't overwater. And you might wanna put a little fan, if at all possible, or open a window to get some airflow going through there to help dry things out a little bit and help you know get the fungus gnats and the mold you know, just to keep things drier and um, better ventilated. Now, Megan asked a really good question about what's the difference between Vermistera and plant food. And I would say that it's the ingredients is what makes it different. You need to check that it's all organic. Vermistera is all organic. They both are, yes. Um, let me, I'll comment on uh, that in just a second. Okay. I, I did want to, um, comment, finish up the watering topic here or the fungus gnat problem. Game Nerd made a great suggestion. I meant to say this and I forgot. So that's one great thing about this community. Everybody chimes in. Game Nerd said bottom watering helps prevent that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, now microgreens, you don't always have to have holes in the bottom of your container, but if you do, definitely set your little tray or set your uh, plant container in a tray of water and let the water wick up from the bottom. Um, so on your comment there, Jerry, for Megan, yeah, for Megan is that um, the Vermistera has it, worm tea. Of course, we know that worms are really good for your garden, but it has really that beneficial bacteria and microbes that really help keep your plants healthy and strong. So it, it's kind of gives a, like a slow and steady growth to your plants. Um, it's good to use over the long term throughout the growing season, and the good dirt is much higher in the nitrogen area, which really helps give you that green leafy growth that we all want for our plants. So they're, I use them in conjunction with one another throughout the growing season. They make a really powerful combination. Okay, let's see here. Um, how often would you fertilize, this is from Carol. Hi Carol, with Good Dirt Vermistera 
uh, and vermistera for plants in the raised bed and blooming readily squash cucumbers and tomatoes okay carol for your raised beds i would do probably once a month or so unless you notice that there's an issue going on uh, maybe things aren't greening up or aren't growing then you might want to do it every um, two weeks the worm tea is so gentle you're not going to burn your plants with it and i've never had a case of burning my plants with a good dirt plant food either so they're both just amazing fertilizers for your garden right on Catherine. thanks for joining us she has to get back to work stephen Catherine. hunt thank you so much for uh just sharing about how our channel has helped you that is fabulous thank you guys wonderful okay let's see here so we have some uk people jumping in at Kinsung, kentucky and i want to say a connecticut person earlier too so good to have you guys okay from nisha hi nisha asking for my friend she has some insects or bugs not worms oops it scrolled by um <laughs> sorry i lost it here in the ground will they damage her veggie seedlings insects or bugs um it's kind of hard to say without saying without knowing what they are nisha if there's any way you can identify them that would definitely help um i would say if they're climbing up on your seedlings try it and see if you can rinse them off with a little bit of water depending on how big your seedlings are and i always try doing that first the bees are really buzzing around they love the nasturtiums back here um, and then uh, if that doesn't work, you can help her, you know, maybe make some uh, dish soap uh, water with a little, a few drops of dish soap. And of course the neem peppermint oil is a really great combination as well. So you can search our channel. There's all kinds of videos on how to get rid of aphids and use neem oil and lots of good organic pest control um, videos on that. Okay, let's see here from Kim. Hi, Kim. Can I use fish fertilizer on my plants? Yes, fish fertilizer. We've used that for many years yes. as well. Mm -hmm. I don't use it so much anymore because it does smell really, really bad. And it tends to attract some of the pests, which we're trying to keep out, like the rodents, the possums, the mm -hmm. cats, things like that. So I don't use it quite as often, but it's a good one too. Yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. See how it works for you. Absolutely. Hello from Berlin, Germany. Uh, Hi there, Paige. Wow, nice to have great. you here. Debbie, boiling water will kill any gnats or eggs in the soil. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that, Debbie. That's a great idea to use for your indoor plants, which I've done that, or have you done it outdoors as well? So that would be great. Okay. So I was just say their dog eats the uh, Snoopy, eats the, the fish fertilizer. Yeah. I remember when Mac would used to do that yeah. too. He would. They like that yeah. smell and that taste. Absolutely. This is Absolutely. like a fish fillet from McDonald's for them. Okay, a couple more questions and then we will sign off. Sure. Oh, you want to do something special at the end, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're going to take two more questions and then we have something special at the end here. Okay, from Vicki V. My tomato seedling growing inside started March 5th. Got yellow splotches on the leaves. Oh, where did that go? I'm sorry, I lost your comment here. Oh dear. Um, yellow splotches on the leaves. Um, you know, it's hard to tell. I'm sorry, I lost your comment. She says, pinch them off. Now part of the leaf tips are brown, dry out and die. What's happening? Oh, with happening all with all of them. Okay, it sounds like you might have some type of disease issue there going through your tomatoes. Um, that's happened to me as well. I've actually had a little bit of powdery mildew on some of mine and some of mine just didn't make it. So. Plant some more is what I would say. Plant backups, yeah. always have backups going. Um, and you know, hopefully you'll be able to get some in time to get them planted outside for you here real soon. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for that. Really appreciate that encouragement and it really inspires us to keep on filming. Thank you. Okay, one more question here. Let's see. What is the best way to start zucchini seeds from Canada Supergirl, Canadian Supergirl, Alyssa? Um, I like to start them inside in peat pellets. And we, have we done a video on that this year? I don't think quite yet. But um, these little beauties here are called peat pellets. I like to use the big ones. You can also use little containers with soil in them. And it gets them off to a good start, especially in Canada, because you have a very short growing season. So start what you can inside. That way, when it does get warm enough, you're going to have little transplant beauties like these to put out in your garden and get yourself some really good zucchini growing all right okay good. 
So here's what we're going to do. I mentioned uh, earlier at the beginning of this that we have a couple of things we wanted to do differently here towards the end of it. And the first one is this. I don't know what our subscriber count is, but we were near 300,000 uh, followers, uh, subscribers on YouTube. And so just before we started, we were like 10 or 20 short. <laughs> yeah, we, we were pretty close to that. So what I did was I made a one minute celebration type video uh, that I am going to put on Instagram right now as we are watching this. So if you are an Instagrammer, but you don't follow me, I am Cali Camera Guy. And if you want to go follow me now, you can catch this video. And uh, again, it's just to celebrate the, you know, the one year, I'm sorry, the 300,000 subscriber kind of thing. Okay. So that's going to fly here in a minute. I've got it right here. The other thing is I'm going to go ahead and, and publish it right now. Just get that Ooh. going. So it is live on my Instagram. That's not it. That is <laughs> Orchard Home, Orchard Home. All right. Oh, there we so, go. so there it is. All right. It's playing. So you may want to go check that out. And I um, hope you enjoy that. Now, the other thing we were going to do is we're going to do it ad hoc. We're going to do it on the fly. And we may drop our connection. And if we do, then we'll see you Friday at 5.30 p.m. But I am going to turn the camera around and just show you what's around. Kim will, will be on the camera, okay? Or, you know, in front of the camera. All right? So here we go. Okay. So if we lose you, we're, we're done. It's over. You know, that kind of thing. But here <laughs> we go. We'll see you Friday. 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, don't forget. And dress up. Okay, Kim. Okay, so we're just walking around, right? Well, I would just walk slowly, and now I'm showing everything behind you. Cool, you can see everything has greened up. Are you all this, can you get up? Everything has greened up amazingly with the rain. It is just absolutely stunning with the flowers. We come out here and we go, it almost looks like a fake green. It's so green. Cliff, can you hear Kim? Just uh, let me know in the closer chat maybe. here. What? So I should get closer, maybe. Huh? Yep. Okay. Do you want to go up there? Or? Oh, I thought you were looking. Whatever you want, okay. Kim. <laughs> okay. Well, Stay gonna... closer to the. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna walk why around. Why don't you just come around this side? Okay, I thought you. Were... Yeah. All right. My microphone's here. Go ahead. Okay. I'll do it. All right. You talk. Fountain area nasturtiums just blooming the thing i love about these i'm just gonna go around here the stay close to the phone okay here sorry See. is the different colors the beautiful like this red right here is just stunning the oranges yellows over here and look at all the bees can you guys see the bees crazy. It's purple kale, or it's actually red Russian kale. This is why you want to grow your own food, guys. You can come out here and just pick it and eat it, take it inside to feed your family. It's just such an amazing feeling. Look at these colors right here. This reminds me of Hawaii. They're just brilliant this year, all the rain. Someone said that they like your top, your blouse. It matches all the flowers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Stay close to the camera here. And then maybe over here is uh, just more nasturtiums and strawberries coming on, guys. This is really exciting. If you want to grow strawberries, try growing them in crates. Save space and the keeps the bugs and the slugs and the snails off of them. And they really just love how everything drains. And I got videos on this. You can go and watch those too. But they're just kind of coming to life. Actually, I'm experimenting with some, something right here. Planted some cucumbers in here. So I thought it would be fun to see if the cucumbers oh, that's different. will just trail over the sides. I've never done that before. So I'm going to see how that works. And I planted these last night. And um, well, I planted them inside a few weeks ago. But it's a market more. These are in the spring garden collection. And uh, it was a little cold last night. But they still look like they're doing pretty good. Lots of flowers here, so we're going to be having some more berries on our yogurt and our smoothies pretty soon. And we just harvested a bunch of peas yesterday. If you guys saw my Instagram post yesterday, we, we harvested um, a whole bunch of peas, some purple peas right here. And then I think we've got the little marvel and the sugar ants in here, but they're just going crazy. And we're able to harvest a nice basket, which I told camera guy, we have healthy snacks now. We have peas and hummus, and that's one of my favorite snacks. 
because you know how it is with this coronavirus. Everybody's eating a lot, us included, too much. Let's pull back just a little bit to see this whole area. Little mini garden tour impromptu here, guys. Just going crazy in here. And I've actually got to thin the nasturtiums out because I need to get some tomatoes and other things planted in this area. So we'll be thinning these out and uh, planting over the next few weeks. And we are gonna be coming back and finishing the spring garden series probably in the next week or two. Okay, I'm trying to think, oh, let's go up the hill. How about there? We'll take you guys up the hill while we wrap up the stream. You can see how we set things up here for our live stream with the umbrella to shade us from the sun and then um, so that we can actually see our phone, which we stream on our phone. And we're just sitting right over there. I don't know if I can walk up that way. Oh, because we got the umbrella. <laughs> okay, we'll walk around. Hang with us, guys. We're going to come up to the second level here. Oh, I forgot to mention. Shoot, I forgot to mention. Right here, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Not on my uh, Facebook, but on um, Katie Dubow. So I'll try and post that link on my Instagram and on my Facebook so you guys can join us over there. Yeah, Master Guns, if you know of a Bluetooth microphone that will stay connected through a live stream, let us know. really about it Jerry this is really pretty here with all the peas growing over this garden arch I really like this yeah that's starting to fill in yeah so maybe we go ahead and sign off here yeah why don't you come back around let's flip this around there we go <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for joining us on today's live stream hope you enjoyed the impromptu garden tour and we look forward to seeing you on Friday, Friday at 5.30 night. p.m. Pacific time. It's going to be a party. It'll be fun. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Okay. How do you turn it off? <laughs>